But I'm always interested in the imprints that human beings leave on their surroundings and their environment. And the evidence for what we have done, where we have been, and what we have achieved is something that's also being resurrected. And that brings us on to so, so nicely to Arjunji's contribution. Arjunji, please share with us your thoughts about the Saraswati River civilization and the other imprints at that time. Please, you have seven minutes. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for this uh, encouraging introduction. Uh, I'm going to talk about the certain issue, uh, which uh, in a certain way has replicated the reputation of Ram Mandir. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the river Saraswati. And uh, there are two reasons why I primarily want to talk about it. First of all, uh, it brings history, archaeology, as well as science uh, together to solve something from uh, our ancient heritage. The second reason being is, although the Saraswati River used to flow only uh, a couple of, you know, a hundred kilometers from here in Delhi, it's infinite far from our consciousness. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not strange to find people talking about uh, the River Saraswati as if it was a BJP dream or it was an RSS fantasy. It's not. It's very much uh, our heritage. It's our fact. Uh, there are proofs throughout. We talk about, if we want to talk about from Vedic literature, we have proofs from uh, surveyors, British surveyors and archaeologists, and of course, science gives us all the facts. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, uh, the proofs in uh, Vedic literature. If, if we see uh, ancient India and ancient Vedic literature, or the early Vedic literature, Rig Veda, of course, tells us volumes about Saraswati River. There's, of course, Nadi Sukta hymn, and there are three hymns uh, dedicated to the river Saraswati. But something happened uh, from early Vedic literature to the later Vedic literature because the Brahmanas as well as the Puranas, uh, they start talking about uh, the end of river Saraswati. They start talking about Vinashana. Uh, Vinashana being the place where the Saraswati river disappears in the desert. While in the early Vedic literature, we have proofs of, uh, we have, uh, they are talking about uh, Saraswati going, uh, starting from the Himalayas and going up till reaching the oceans. Uh, but in the later Vedic literature, we have Vinashana and of course, uh, where the source of the river is uh, in the lesser Shivaliks, uh, which is also backed by uh, proofs in Mahabharat. Now, while, uh, while we're talking about it, of course, Saraswati River has been uh, in the news cycle for a variety of reasons, uh, be it the BBC documentary or be some new paper in nature. Or of course, since the BJP government has been in power, uh, it's been talked about uh, and pushed further as if uh, Saraswati is the only thing on BJP's mind in Haryana. But uh, it's not a new thing. Uh, if we consider uh, the British era, if we consider early archaeologists and geologists and surveyors, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, texts talking about how Saraswati River or uh, the paleo bed of Ghaggar Hakra channel was um, actually Saraswati and it, around it there was this big civilization which was flourishing. And uh, it won't be wrong to say if, uh, if someone calls this Indus civilization as Indus Saraswati civilization. Uh, starting with, say, James Todd in his book, um, Annals and Antiquities of uh, 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 India, uh, he talks about uh, uh, this, this very area in northern Rajasthan where people have this tradition and people talk about, there are Rajput songs talking about a certain culture uh, where the river is actually uh, quite rich with water and there is huge civilizations, there are a lot of mounds and it was very populated. However, in the later years, of course, as we know, uh, this, this entire Ghaggar Hakra channel uh, became uh, less, um, it, it went out of water and uh, of course got extinct for certain reasons. Now, when, when people talk about Saraswati River, of course a term comes around Ghaggar Hakra channel. Now, Ghaggar Hakra is not different. Ghagar is the channel uh, which starts, of course, in modern day close to um, uh, Pinjor, uh, close to Chandigarh. From there, it goes down to Ambala, Kurukshetra, Sirsa, close to Fatehabad, Hanumangarh, and Suratgarh in Rajasthan. But as soon as it crosses the Indo Pak border, it, it's, it's called by the name of uh, Hakra. So, Ghagar Hakra channel is actually a paleo bed of Saraswati River. And it goes, it gets disappeared in the desert uh, or Cholistan desert in Pakistan. Now, uh, in modern day, if we are talking about um, uh, Saraswati River, they are, there are certain ways of defining how a river is or where was the paleo bed or did Saraswati even exist. Of course, we have proxies uh, which we take from archaeology. Uh, we've got maps, maps uh, or maps of Hindustan uh, which talk about as River Saraswati, which was a tributary of the Saraswati River. 
Uh, using these proxies, first of all, we start about uh, having uh, using remote sensing and aerial photography to find out a channel. Then we use uh, techniques like um, finding the cross beds on fieldworks. We find about the thickness of the sediment bed. We try to dating as well to figure out uh, what was the source of the water, what was the source of the sediment. We also try to uh, learn about the sediment flux to ascertain up to which extent was Saraswati as good as it's been described in the Vedic literature. So uh, further, if anyone wants to uh, know about, so there are critically, uh, I believe there are two or three questions which are very important if one wants to understand the river Saraswati. One is uh, where, was the, where was the source? Uh, where did the waters come from? The second, of course, when and how did it disappear? In the first context, where the source, uh, we can use zircon dating or we can use strontium dating as well to figure out the source of water. Uh, there are certain people who would try to say that the source was trans Himalayas. There are others uh, which validate with the facts in uh, or uh, Vedic literature. We talk about the source in lesser Himalayas. And the other question that's important to answer is how it got disappeared. So uh, there are people who, uh, two schools of thought, one talks about climate change because as soon as the greenhouse age uh, set in, there was a lot of glacial melting and a lot of water from higher Himalayas was flowing down. So maybe that was the source of water uh, for Saraswati as well. Other reason people talk about uh, how it got extinct or how it disappeared uh, could be very well be tectonics as well. A tectonic shift might have led to uh, change of course of uh, the source of water. So these uh, questions are very important to answer and it's not, uh, uh, it's not something that we should take lightly because um, students and you know, college students throughout India every year sit for, uh, you know, pray to Saraswati as the goddess of wisdom. So don't take it lightly. And uh, well, scientific research should be furthered and I believe a value neutral uh, solution to this problem should be found out. Thank you. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.